Hello, my name is Magnus de Wet, Manager Derivatives Specialist working in the Equity Derivatives Market of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It is my pleasure to do today the introduction to Suffolk Style Options. Please note that Suffolk Style Options, the underlying could be on multiple assets at the JSE. We've got Suffolk Style Options based on equities, commodities, currencies, bonds, and international blue chip companies, or IDX market. I will be making use of the equity derivative market, or the, the shares as the underlying market in my presentation today. Very importantly, if you get the concept of Suffolk style options though, you can apply it to any of these other assets. So I will be using equities as my underlying asset today. Just quickly, the definition. What is the theoretical definition of an option? An option provides the holder the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a specified quantity of an underlying asset at a predetermined price on or before an expiration date. Now, I think we all agree that is quite a mouthful. So what, what I'll do is I just want to break it up. Firstly, it is an agreement. It is not where you are going into the underlying equities market and physically buying shares. You are not buying physical shares at this point of the contract. You are going into a legal agreement between a buyer and a seller at which you agree that you are going to buy something in the future or you're going to sell something in the future. If you are going to buy something in the future, that we call a call option. If you are going to sell something in the future, we call it a put option. Okay, so we also we agree the price that you are going to buy or sell in the future. Now, 90% of the options traded on the JSE is the price of the current share. It will also be the price at what, which we will buy in the future or sell in the future. So if the share is trading today at 100 Rand, 90% of the time the buyer or the seller also wants to buy or sell at 100 Rand in the future. Now, obviously, for someone to sell you that right, because the buyer gets the right but not the obligation. The seller only gets obligations. Now, nobody in his right mind is just going to give people obligations that he will buy or sell at agreed prices. The seller of the option, therefore, charges what we call a premium. That premium is very easily explained, and I'll do that later. Some analogies we use to explain call options and put options for a call option, we use the analogy of a house. You are in the market to buy a new house. In your area, there's a, someone selling a house. The house is being sold for a million rand. You are very interested in buying this house, but due to unknown reasons or you're, you're waiting for a bonus or you're waiting for a home loan to approve, you don't have the million rand yet to buy the house. You can approach the seller of the house and you can say to the seller of the house, I would like to buy the option from you to buy this house in six months' time. The option, the, 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 the owner of the house will then tell you, yes, Magnus, I'm happy you buy this house for me for a million rand in six months' time. But in order to get this right, but not this obligation, you're going to need to pay me a premium. You're going to have to pay me 10,000 rand. Me, as the buyer of the option, I would then pay this premium to the seller, and the seller would take that money. What happens then in six months' time, one of two things can happen. In six months' time, houses in the area now are trading at much higher prices, They're selling for 1.5 million. Now, I've got the right to buy it for a million. That seller of that option, he has the obligation now. I've got the right, but not the obligation, he, to sell me that house for a million rand. Even though it's just selling in the area now for 1.5, he has to sell it to me for a million rand. Or alternatively, what could happen in six months' time, the house could now be selling for 500,000 rand. So the prices of houses has crashed. Markets crashed terribly. Now, I've paid 10,000 Rand to have the right to buy this house for a million Rand, but the houses in the area is now selling for 500,000 Rand. I'll be stupid to exercise my option. So basically, what I do is I walk away. That is the call option analogy. Put option analogy, I'll bring it closer to the stock exchange. Imagine you own shares, your shares trading at 100 Rand. During the 2008 meltdown, you are worried that the share price is now going to crash. But you don't want to sell your shares, you just want to take out insurance. You can now in approach a financial institution, the financial institution will make you a price, and they will say, it's fine, Magnus, you are worried that your share is going to decrease in value. I will sell this 
you could sell me this share. I would therefore buy it from you in the future, in a year's time, for five rand. You just need to pay me a premium of five rand. Okay? You would pay that financial institution five rand. In a year's time, prices now of the shares, yes, the market has crashed. Now, shares is selling for 50 rand. Now, I've got the right to sell my shares to this financial institution for 100 rand. I paid the financial institution 5 rand to get that right, but not that obligation. Okay, so that is basically the analogies for a call and a put option. We also, very importantly, work with payoff diagrams. And, a, and we will explain payoff diagrams and trading strategies at a later stage, but I will lay the basis for payoff diagrams when we're working with options. The easiest to explain a payoff diagram is first just looking at a normal share, owning a normal share or being long a future. If we could just draw on the board, basically you would have a diagram that looks like this. Um, at the top would be profit. On the y-axis profit and on the y-axis at the bottom, you will have loss. On the x-axis, you will have the share price. Okay. So, in my example, say, so then we'll have a diagonal line like this representing your long share or your long future. Basically, what will happen in this scenario now, you can say, if your share is worth 100 rand, now, if it moves tomorrow, it moves to 110 Rand. You can see what, uh, what's happened here is you would have made a 10 Rand profit. Cool. If the share went down to 90 Rand, you can see you would have made a loss of 10 Rand. So that is very easily explained. Uh, this is a profit loss payoff diagram for being long a future or owning a share. Now we can apply this concept also to calls and puts. Okay, so if I could just quickly put up here, show you a call. Now remember, what is the definition of a call? A call says you've got the right but not the obligation to buy or sell, or to, sorry, to buy a share in the future at a predetermined price. Now if that price is 100 Rand, Remember, on the x-axis, we've got the share price going across like this. And again, we've got loss going over here. And we've got profit going over here. Now, obviously, this is long a call. And there is also a slide in your presentation showing this very clearly. Being long a call, you first have to obviously pay for this option. Basically, when you pay for an option, you would start for a, at a loss. Say you, you, you want to buy a share at 100 Rand, it's currently trading at 100 Rand. You, the guy on the other side charges you 10 Rand to buy this option, so you would start at a 10 Rand loss, which is basically your premium you're paying. Working your payoff diagram like this, there's 100 Rand. Now, if the share price moves to 110 Rand over here, you can see you have broke even. Okay, so this is what we call your break-even point. It'll be 110 Rand. Then, as the share increases, if it goes to 120 Rand, what will happen? You would make 10 Rand profit. Very importantly, what you can see from this diagram is that your losses are capped. Unlike shares and unlike futures, your losses, you can't lose more than the 10 Rand premium you've paid. But your, your profits are uncapped. So this is what makes options such unique instruments. And being long an option, either a put or a call, your losses are always limited. I will now indicate being short a call and why it is much more risky. When you're selling options, it is very risky, and I don't recommend it for first-time traders or the retail market. But I will show you the payoff diagram for it. Being short a call... And following on from our previous example, remember when you are selling an option, you are basically selling the right to someone else to buy the share. In our previous example, we said you are buying the right to buy it for 100. Now somebody needed to sell it to you. Now when you're selling an option, you would obviously start in the profit side. Okay? 
profit at the top, loss like always. In our example, you pay 10 Rand to actually get that. Okay, so you'll start off with a profit of 10 Rand. This is when the share is trading at 100. Now, now the share is going into the buyer's favor, and now this share trading at 100 Rand is now trading at 110 Rand. Okay, so you can see, being the seller of the option, being short the call, you have now broken even and you've lost your 10 Rand profit that you've made. If it moves further and it moves to 120, now you can see your losses, you've now already made a 10 Rand loss. This is unlimited, it's not capped. So it could carry on, if it moves to 200, you just keep on losing more and more. That's why it is very risky to write options for someone that's not a sophisticated trader or that's new in the market. Okay, so basically that is payoff diagrams. You would also see in your presentations, there is also indication of what a put looks like. You get long puts and short puts, just like you get long calls and short calls. The long, long puts, again, that's what we recommend for new um, traders or retail investors. That is to be used to protect your portfolio. Now, very importantly, when we talk about options, and we've mentioned it before, options trade in premium. Shares trade in price, futures trade in price, options trade in premium. Now, how do we calculate that premium? Very simply, um, for SAFIC style options, there's five variables that we need to use to calculate premium. The five variables is obviously, firstly, like in our examples, what is the current underlying price? If the share is trading at 100 Rand currently, 90% of the time, the buying or the selling price in the future would also be 100 Rand. So that underlying price is very important. The strike price, this price that we've been talking about in the future, that is called the strike price. So at what price are we agreeing today that we are going to buy or sell something in the future? That is called the strike price. Also, very important, you can imagine in your calculations of a premium, if somebody wants to, wants to pay 90 Rand for something that's trading at 100 Rand today, the premium is going to be much higher. The expiry date. The further in the future this contract would expire, the higher the premium. So very importantly, also the expiry date. Option type, if it's a call or a put. And then lastly, volatility. Volatility would be explained in detail in, an, in a further podcast on Safik style options. But for now, all you need to know about volatility, it's a very important factor in in calculating your premium. The higher the volatility, the higher the premium. The lower the volatility, the lower the premium. But volatility is the size and speed of change in the underlying futures price. What we then do is, once we've got these five variables, just, just so you know, there is also two other variables that could be used in normal options, not SAFIC style options, options where the option is based on the share. These two variables are interest rates and dividend yield. But because our options is based on futures, or what we call SAFIC style options, we can eliminate these, these two variables as they are already included in the futures price. We take these five variables and we put them through what we call the Black-Scholes calculator. This calculator was, or this formula was de developed by two uh, academics in the late 70s, and it makes use of the theory of normal distributions of price movement over time. So we put that through the, the Black-Scholes calculator and we, voila, we get, a, we get a, um, a value for our options or the premium for our options. Also some terminology that you might have heard with regards to options is firstly American style options. All American style options says is that remember when you're buying an option you've got the right but not the obligation to exercise your options. Now American style options says you, any time leading up to that expiry date or on the expiry date, you can exercise your option. European style option says you can't exercise leading up to the expiry date. You can only exercise your option. In other words, you can only buy or sell those shares on that expiry date. The JC makes both use of both American and European style options. Even though American style options, we do make use of it on the equity derivatives market, we found it suboptimal as when you're trading options, you are buying for time. When you're exercising early, you are throwing away what you basically paid for. Another point is also, remember, it's not like you're getting the share when, you, when you're trading Safik style options. You are getting the future. So 
there is a risk that if you get out of that, to get also get out of that futures position. Therefore, we have found it suboptimal, and it really, really happens that somebody early exercise. We also get terminology called in the money, out the money, and at the money. In the money very simply says, in our example, a call option where you've got the right to buy something for 100 Rand, the share is trading at 120 Rand, that option is in the money because you will exercise it. You will take up your right and you would buy it for 100 Rand even though it's trading for 120 Rand. Out the money is just the opposite. You've got the right to buy it for 100 Rand, but now the share is trading at 90 Rand. So why would you pay 100 Rand if you could just go in the market? Now, if your option is out the money, you would what we call abandon the option. You would just walk away from the option and your maximum loss, like we've indicated, on the payoff diagrams would be that premium that you actually paid. At the money is exactly what it says. You've got the right to pay some for something 100 Rand, which is now also trading at 100 Rand. So it's exactly at, at the money. Basically, that brings us to why we call it Sapphic style options. As I've indicated before, our Sapphic style options is based on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange model. That means it is a future on an option which is based on a future. Okay, so it sounds very complicated, but very importantly, it's very straightforward. Our options is based on the future, so it's not based on the share. So it's an option on a future. But why we call it a future on an option on a future is because we do what we call margining on a daily basis. In, in, in other markets, when the option is based on the spot, you could pay the premium up front. We don't pay the premium up front with Sapphic style options. The premium gets paid over the life. And how we do that is we revalue the option on a daily basis. Taking those values, uh, the five parameters that we've mentioned, we've put it through the Black Shoals calculator and we recalculate the premium on a daily basis. As I've said before, the further out the, the expiry of the option, the higher the option premium. Now, if we revalue then leading up to expiry on a daily basis, the time is going to get less and less on, on the options, and therefore the premium is going to go less. Now, because it's future styled, and the long person of the option, if you've got an asset and the value gets going down, you keep on losing and you keep on paying money over to the seller. And that's exactly what we want. We want the buyer of the option to pay over the life as theta or as time tickles over, we want them to pay the premium systematically over to the seller. On the last day, what we then got is we've got the total premium paid from the buyer onto the seller. From the exchange point of view, we make the option price zero on expiry date, ensuring that all the premium on the last day flow over from the buyer to the seller. Now, very importantly, and this is indicated on your slides, indicating the cash flows for a option. What would happen on expiry is we would, we would close the position on the option side because it's expired, but what we'll then do is we'll, if it's a call option, we would create, for the buyer of the call option, we would create a long futures position, and for the seller of the option, we would create a short futures position. If the, if the option is in the money, the JSE automatically exercise all options that one cent in the money or more. So if it is one cent in the money or more, automatically we would close out that option and we would create the futures position for you. The futures position would be created at the strike price. Very importantly, in our example of 100 and 120, we would create the, the future at a strike price of 100 rand. Therefore, when we do the mark to market, which will be 120 at that close of day, the futures holder, the guy being long, where he received his position at the strike price of 100, would now get a mark to market and a variation margin of 20 Rand. If you then look, what is the profit for, for the person being long the call option? It would be the 20 Rand that he made on the futures contract, which he received through exercising this option, minus the 12 Rand premium, which he agreed up front. That would indicate its total profit of 8 Rand. Very importantly also on these cash flow examples is we show that how we do the valuation of the premium on a daily basis. We also show that we are recalculating the initial margin or the good faith deposit on a daily basis. As with futures, we do charge initial margin. The difference between futures initial margin 
and options initial margin is the fact that in options initial margin gets recalculated as we recalculate the premium on a daily basis. It therefore, as it becomes more or less risky, the initial margin will move up or down. The difference between the previous day initial margin and the current day's initial margin would be your variation initial margin. And the combination of your premium variation margin plus your initial variation margin would make your total cash flow for both the buyer and the seller on a daily basis. The cash flow examples show very clearly how it was agreed to pay 12 rand to get the call option, the right but not obligation, to buy a share that is currently trading at 100 rand for 100 rand in the future. It shows it was traded at 12 rand. It also shows by adding up these premium variation margins and the initial variation margins that you will get to a total of 12 rand from the buyer to the seller. Lastly, I would also like to just explain options versus warrants. As you might have heard, at the JSE, we also list warrants. The similarities between warrants is both give you the right but not the obligation. So they give you the option functionality. Some of the differences is options trades in the SAFX market. It trades on the equity derivatives market. Warrants trades on the equities market. It trades on a system called Trade Elect. What you can do on options, which you can't do on a warrant, is you can short. So in other words, you don't first have to own the warrant, like in the warrants market. You first have to own the warrant before you can sell it. So, in other words, arbitraging or correcting a price. On the options market, you can go either long or short without having to own the actual instrument before you do that. Also, the volatility on the options market is very transparent. We do publish the, the volatility on a daily basis, and it gets adjusted on a daily basis by looking at where the market is actually trading. The volatility on warrants are set by the warrant issuers and is determined by the warrant issuers, not independently by the JSE. Also, options are issued by the exchange. So we as the exchange issue options, where warrants get issued by a financial institution. A financial institution will approach the JSE, they will then list the warrant, and they would be the market makers in that warrant. So, so options is fungible, which means you can... It's, it's an anonymous market. You can therefore buy from one financial institution and sell onto another financial institution. Warrants is not like that. If you buy your warrant from one financial institution, you have to sell it back to that financial institution. You can't go and sell it to another financial institution. Options is therefore what we call free markets. You can, it's anonymous markets where you can put up your price and you can go either long or short depending on how you see the price. Warrants is what we, what we call captive markets. You can only see the bids and offers coming from your uh, warrant provider or the warrant issuer. That basically also then explains the differences between an option and a warrant. That also brings me to the end of my presentation, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, the options, Safix style options like I've done, and I hope to see you trading Safix style options soon. Please don't hesitate to contact derivatives trading at jse.co.za or visit our website www.safix.co.za forward slash options should you have more questions. Have a good day. Bye bye.